Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 12th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast, the Determined Length, episode number 651. And we have a special guest with us, Tony. Hey. <laughs> He's back. Welcome back. We're back. This Thank time. you. Bringing you on for one of these. Let's talk about sex. But Gary, why specifically are we bringing him on for one of these episodes? Well, we love having Tony here. I mean, you know, he's knowledgeable and fun and he makes a great guest host. Uh, mm-hmm. However... I decided to um, tap into something that he has some knowledge in, so to speak, Um, expertise in an area. So today we're going to talk about Internet security. Oh, that's what we're going to talk about. Never mind. (laughs) Uh huh. We'll discuss the other stuff later. Uh, There we go. (laughs) You think you're funny, uh huh? Yeah. Now, I'm sure our audience might be a little confused whether they're watching or listening and being like, Huh? Like, this is a let's talk about sex. Like, Jeff just played the little clippy thing. Like, why would we talk about internet security? Well, yeah. yeah. There are. Um, so th- there's a couple of questions to be asked. Um, and this comes about from a TED Talk. So if you're not familiar, for some reason, there are uh, a series of beautiful lectures that are done live that are captured on video um, called TED Talks. Um, and they go over a lot of different things, but in this case, a gentleman by the name of Ken Monroe, um, did a talk called, we need to talk about sex toys and cybersecurity. And it was just posted a couple months ago and I ended up sharing it. Um, and kind of like ping Tony and was like, Hey, I think this is important. (laughs) We might want to talk about this. Um, because Technology has advanced and, you know, we now have new ways to have fun, um, whether we do them alone or with others. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's this uh, newer technology called the Internet of Things, IOT, um, you know, where your refrigerator can like let you see what's inside of it with an embedded camera. It can do your grocery list, which can load to your device. It can order things online for you. Like... And sex toys, believe it or not, are also part of the Internet of Things. Mm. So what we kind of want to talk about is, can they be hacked? Uh, What you should know about that, because I think people, we presume that manufacturers take the necessary steps to protect us. Yeah. And if you're not aware of that, corporations have one goal, and that is to make money. What? <laughs> and so they might gee, say they the month issues. of June, you think corporations are trying to make money from us? Right, right. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, they might have a mission statement and a set of values and, you know, when they might have a diversity, equity and inclusion officer board, blah, blah, blah. That's all fine and dandy. Like, but that's not necessarily meaning when it comes to tech. That they're on, you know, the edge of things. Um, And Tony has kind of been one of those people that's like, hey, hacking happens. Mm. Uh, Keep your shit secure. So this is uh, an interesting dovetail (laughs) of like (laughs) what you like to do to get to get your uh, 
jolly, so to speak, um, and technology coming together. And so I thought this would be an interesting uh, discussion. So uh, I thank you, Tony, for joining us because I think it's pretty awesome that we're going to go over some some interesting things. Um, and I believe you've also discovered some stuff as well. So, Yeah, and it's, this is also a topic that doesn't get brought up very much because uh, no. it's kind of taboo for people. Right. Yeah. Heaven forbid we talk about the toys that we might use. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that does bring up an interesting point, I think, uh, at least for me. Um, we're all of, a, of, a, of an age that I think we don't really think much about technology when it comes to toys. Um, you know, like the closest that you might think of is like, do I have the right batteries? <laughs> like, Where's the remote? That, what, no, 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 like just batteries. Like, I mean, like I'm thinking about like, you know, vibrators was about it and it took batteries and it's like, well, what kind was it? How, how big, um, you know, was it, uh, C's, D's. Um, it's I guess so if you funny like, as you say that. It's so, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny you say that as I'm looking across and I see a bag full of like C, those big like C and D batteries that Jim brought from upstairs. Just like now, they're supposed to go. They're going into a drawer that we have on the hutch that for like we keep a we keep them there for you know so that they're all in one place. But I was just like. That's kind of hilarious that we're talking about vibrators and batteries and <laughs> literally in my eyesight is a bag. I don't know where to say it. Now, I'm scared of y'all because if you're using D sized batteries in your toys, yeah, that's terrifying. That, uh, yeah, I, I think like, <laughs> I think it's more like double or triple A batteries are probably more like it. <laughs> okay. Can we, can we pause the topic for a second? Let's go back. Let's go back to what we were talking about pre-show. Hello, Twitter, Tumblr. Have none of y'all ever seen the videos that some people post? Oh, I have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now they're not worried now, about security. <laughs> now, now people are putting things up inside of them. They're as big as a limb. I mean. <laughs> To hell with fist fucking parties. Now it's just like, let me sit on this like keg or whatever. I mean, <laughs> traffic cone. Oh, girl, that's old school. That's the 80s. Uh, <laughs> I know somebody who did that. I saw a video of it and I, I mean, was like, oh, oh. You have all the bad dragons. Okay. Yes. Right, but like a bad dragon to me is is just fun. Like, I mean, I don't have any of them, but like that, that, that I'm just like, eh, those are you know, anamorphic, whatever. If you, yeah, you're you're talking like, like, and and we're not sponsored, but like like Twisted <laughs> Beast and all of their like weird like, um, things from the depths, like a big ass like like tentacle, with like like I'm sitting here like I'm I saw that and I was like, um. <laughs> like, what? Like, mm. like, I remember when I was a young adult and I could go into the adult bookstore back in my day. And, like, <laughs> and you would see the fist or the hand. And it uh -huh. was like a chopped off piece of a mannequin. And you had to, like, think about why that was in an adult bookstore to be sold as a sex toy. Like it took some kind of imagination to figure out what that was. That was about the extreme of it. And now like you could buy a quote unquote butt plug that is like practically a fire hydrant. <laughs> or is the fire hydrant. <laughs> or, or it could be silicone molded fire hydrant. Right. So anyways, we're That'd off topic. Nice, but the point nice is. cool for irrigating your inside. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> the part anyway. I was gonna—I I was loving that. I think we need a backstory on his bookstore. What is that? A what? Huh? They what? still no no. They still exist to this day. Does Does anyone under twenty know what that is? <laughs> That's true. Uh, they do if they go on Squirt. <laughs> it's about the last bastion that they still talk about bookstores. Uh, where you no, can go. There, there, there's a few other sites where they still talk about it. And you I see, mean, and, and, and you could... down, being down here in Texas, there's yeah, well, well I, I, I don't think they're 
bookstores nowadays. They're novelty shops. Or video lounges. Yeah. So so you go to watch movies in private. Because the because the <laughs> because the theater rooms are are going by the D- wayside, D- despite the holes that are in the wall. Either side. Well, no, that so you could just like you know wave to the person next door, extend a hand, give him a handshake. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> back to the topic. We are so derailed. I love that we haven't even I'm, started. <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously like like like. Gary literally just said, give him a handshake. And we're just like five minutes ago, we were talking about this thing. Like, <laughs> just saying. The thing is, what is it, what is your hand shaking? That's that's the thing is. And 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 is it an up and down motion or is it actually more of like buggy? Anyway, no, 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 no. Anyway, so on topic. Are you using one hand or both hands? Honey, I saw the strangest hand lotion dispenser in the men's restroom. Anyways. <laughs> We're going to kill Tony. <laughs> we get to the top. That's like an old joke from Hustler. Anyways. Yeah, showing my age. Uh, so are there things to get started, Tony? Are there things that we should probably discuss before we get into like the, the tech aspect of things? <laughs> uh, a lot of what, um, going back to, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly touch on that, that TED talk that uh, Ken gave. Um, a, a lot of what he was discussing was they had done research and, and actually had analyzed stuff mm-hmm. so that they knew exactly what those toys were. But one of the things they did was they didn't list the toys because um, mm. they didn't want to get anybody in trouble. Mm. Um, so. Anything that I would mention today, I'm I'm just going to say is is not necessarily the same ones they were using. Got it. <laughs> just so, don't assume these are what they were talking about. <laughs> but we are we are what we're I think what we're trying to discuss are toys that somehow <laughs> access the or I, I'm yeah use the internet or use the things. Uh oh, you've got to you've got to. Tony has props. We'll 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 it's oh, a yes. show and tell okay. today. Okay. So get ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so one of the things that, that that I think a lot of people don't even consider these days is just how much everything is cloud based. Mm-hmm. Um, like you were talking earlier with with trying to uh, businesses having a profit motive. Uh, these days they don't actually worry as much about security because. From their viewpoint, it's the cloud the company that does the security. Mm. So they don't care about it. They just want to get it out and sell it. And so a lot of times when it comes to security on whatever toy it is, uh, if it's cloud-based, they haven't even tried. Um, if it's Bluetooth or something like where it attaches just to your phone but doesn't go out to the internet, uh, there is usually some security there because of the, the uh, encryption in the actual uh, device itself. Um, but anytime it reaches out to the internet, you're, you're going to start risking, uh, what can be done. And even with like Bluetooth, there are still dangers in it. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, some of these were brought up in the Ted talk, but, uh, it's like, uh, for example, a a bad uh, situation where like Bluetooth, you can jam Bluetooth and, uh, let's say you've got a device that turns on when it gets, it doesn't get a response. Uh, you could just jam them and then now they're stuck in it on all the time. Whatever oh. it is. And most of the devices that we're going to be talking about require a power source. So they most mm-hmm. likely have a battery of some kind, if not a rechargeable battery, because that's mm-hmm. the convenience of technology. So there's there's definitely a danger physically if something were to happen um, and something was to be, you know, stuck on, quote unquote, it could overheat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. You know. Our... And even toys that we... No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You're you're about to say what I think. You're you're probably going to say what I'm about to say. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say even the toys that we used to consider as safe. So, like most of us are familiar with like ten units, um, mm. and like the ones that required a nine volt battery, you put in it, and sure that was portable, but it only lasted so long. Yeah. Like this is the the modern equivalent uh, of oh. that. Oh. And it's, it's got a lithium battery inside of it. Uh, it's got a, enough of a battery that it's equal to some cell phones and yeah. 
if this were to get locked on, how do you turn it off? <laughs> oh dear. So for those that are that are listening, Tony was holding up, which kind of looked like a sophisticated bow tie. Um, yeah. So it's got these like little wings, which I think are the pads, right? Yeah. Normally yeah. you'd pull this off and then you'd put it. This is meant for your back, but they have electrodes that you can attach uh, right. as well. So, uh, so for those that don't here. know, a, a TENS unit, if you've ever been to like a chiropractor or for therapy and they attach a device to you and it sends an electrical current to stimulate your muscles. Um, like uh, I go to chiropractic every couple of weeks and they do that um, with me and it's really helpful. But what he's showing is a nice little handy portable one that you could place on your body. Um, but the point is, is like now the convenience, the portability factor, the advancement of the technology is also kind of what might make it dangerous. Yeah. Well, because in the past, in, in the past, bleh, back in the past, when you used one of these that had the nine volt battery, you had the controls. Right. But right. now, because it's app based, your phone has the controls. Mm -hmm. So in theory, you have still have local control, but you don't know if the back end of that thing is going out to the cloud or communicating with their network mm -hmm. in any way before it touches your device. Right. So. Interesting. <laughs> And just that, and that's what I meant by is just stuff that we even considered as safe in the past isn't necessarily safe anymore. Um, so even toys, uh, like I, I hold that sideways. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, this is this is one that you, you, you could buy from. Uh, in this case, again, not sponsored, but this is a Fort Trough unit that uh, is wireless. And in, in the past, you would have just turned it on and off. But now you have a, a wired or wireless remote, even though it's radio frequency, so it doesn't hook up to a phone app or anything else. But even this has security issues with it. Mm -hmm. Now, your risk is pretty low, but uh, I, I could give yeah. you a really good scenario that this might be an important thing. <laughs> Everyone yeah. ready to imagine? Yeah, Dave, David's ready for story time. Yes, because I'm... Okay. I, I, I... <laughs> These I've seen, and I I know people that have them, and specifically they like it because it has the remote because you don't have to like, for lack of a better phrase, like reach down or you know wherever wherever it might be, reach adjust. around or reach to, to adjust to turn on <laughs> off turn move up yeah, so continue. So a, a lot of these wireless devices, the ones that don't have apps associated. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, they all use the same frequency. So if you had a remote and someone else also had the same device, it would probably trigger both. Um, these days, they actually do have them tokened. So for the most part, if you buy a quality product, they don't tend to uh, use the same frequency uh, uh, marker so that you don't trigger multiple ones. However, having said that, uh, if you buy cheap clones, you're probably going to get that issue where they're all sharing the same remote so the situation is is iml was two weeks ago could you imagine taking this remote around on the floor and just hitting the up button constantly <laughs> oh i mean right. how many people oh, would double oh. over right because are like, we really happy um uh, well th that could also be a possibility yeah uh, unexpectedly <laughs> double over really happy yeah 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 but, um, you know, I was just thinking, uh, I mean, IML, like the, you know, is a, is a good example. I was just thinking of like, if you went to a play space that was like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't know how else I want to phrase it, group activity. Um, <laughs> and, you know, if it's, if it's a more sophisticated one, I guess is a way to phrase it. Like there are defined spaces, there could be multiple scenes taking place and someone wouldn't realize that like next door or nearby, there could be a similar device and therefore affected, mm -hmm. uh, you know, inadvertently. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and also there, there used to be a problem where a device for one or a remote for one device might actually work on a completely different device because they just tended to reuse the chips over and over again. So your remote control for a cock ring might uh, enable somebody else's plug to turn on. <laughs> yeah. And that's, it's interesting to think that way and and realize that, you know, that could the potential, like, quote unquote, danger, you know, uh, I don't want to say danger, just unsecure, mm -hmm. you know, insecurity 
Right, because like in the in the example that Tony gave about IML or I was talking about a play space, there's a presumption that the audience or the group that's involved in this like activities, like they all are kind of together, like there's no malicious intent. Yeah. So it would be yeah. it would be kind of like an oopsie, like and as soon as somebody figured out what was wrong or happening, they could stop it and mm -hmm. you know, and then try to adjust without it, you know, like someone having some ill intent, basically. Exactly. But likewise, these little things could also give you away too. So imagine yeah. you decide not to do IML, but you decide to go to, uh, I don't know, a political rally and start turning these on. <laughs> See who has a device on them. Okay. What's that buzzing? Just the, the same kind bad. of security issue. Yeah, but uh, the 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 internet makes everything so much more complicated, though, because now you're relying on servers that you don't have access to, mm -hmm. um, and so you're trusting that they're putting security in. And as we discussed, most companies don't spend money on security if they can avoid it. Um, and what ends up happening is it's better than it used to be. So, like those multiple devices being triggered with a single remote, that rarely happens. Again, unless you buy something really cheap. Um, but what can happen is you can get what's uh, referred to in the security world as a denial of service. Uh, so that's where you're either being jammed, you're being blocked, uh, your account gets locked, uh, a server is taken down. I mean, how many denial of service attacks have we heard about on Sony and Xbox? Now, imagine that's going after your sex toy maker. <laughs> hmm. And so let's say you take out a... Uh, so one of the uh, devices that was brought up, which I do not have uh, in the TED Talk, was called a cellmate. That's the uh, chastity cage that is electrified. Okay. Oh, Now it's oh. electrified. Yeah. So version one didn't have electricity. Version two has an electrical uh, a series of uh, connections on the inside. <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't mind my face. I'm, I'm just... I'm... <laughs> I'm having a mental journey. In David, David's to... David's having a process over there. Yeah. About, about the idea of an electrified cage. Yeah. Th that was the response I had when I watched this talk, and he got to that. Yeah. It just. Oh wow. Mm, keep going. Because I'm. Yeah. Well, uh, and for those people who aren't aware, uh, basically, it's the equivalent of the tens inside the chastity cage. Okay. <laughs> So now imagine these little electrodes and somebody just cranked the 10 oh, mm, and mm. you can't take it off. You can't remove it. You can't yeah. drain it. The battery doesn't come out because, wow. Sorry, I'm just, you know, lithium ion rechargeable battery. Yeah. Yep. You've got, you've got the, you've got that kind of power, power. Um, and for most people, when they're doing Cassidy, whether, it's their own or um, they have someone, a sir or whoever that is. Um, they've key given holder. Key, key holder. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, they may not have access to the key or in the case where they do. And it's like a self, you know, they've chosen to do it themselves. Um, self chastity. They may have access to key, but if it's cranked up to like 10, they might not be able to reach it let alone put it in the lock where, you know, put the key in the lock where it needs to go to get it off. Cause if they're, you know, electricity and, is not, is not a joke. And, um, I, down there for me personally, no health or no, but, <laughs> um, but just, you know, like you said, crank it up to 10, which may, like you're saying, like maximum power is, is yeah. If you're not ready for it <laughs> and you're not used to it, maybe you, you're, you've are you never had it go up that high. Maybe you're a two, three kind of person. That's going to be jarring and potentially physically harming. Right. Um, and, and then if you can't get out of it, oh. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. And this is going to be right now where I'm saying I have not torn the device apart, so there may be a safety mechanism that says you can't go above it for 10 seconds or whatever. Yeah. These are just considerations you need to think about before you go into the devices. Mm -hmm. uh, my recommendation on, like if you're doing the, the 
chastity type things is normally those sync to your phone and mm -hmm. the key holder, whoever they are, should have the ability to give you a one-time code that you can punch in and get in, which is great unless it's cloud-based and somebody took out the server, <laughs> in which case you probably can't unlock it. Now, the odds of both of those happening at the same time, probably not the case. Yeah. But let's say you had a, an enemy of yours uh, in the local community who decided they were going to target you and they saw you at the bar. Oh, so God. They, they they can tell immediately when that Bluetooth device shows up in range, so they know that you're within 100 feet of them. Uh, then they can kick it off, and you could have issues. <laughs> wow. Wow. And it's, it's just weird. a lot of little stuff that you didn't think about. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because you don't think about these things when you put them on or put them in you or what have you. You probably don't really think too much about it because again it's it's sex right it's it's yeah. meant to be you know playtime and having fun and enjoying yourself or enjoying other people um are enjoying yourself while you're enjoying other people whatever um and again you don't i don't think you would think about the potential risk um or how I mean, I, I will own like before this episode, I didn't even I've thought about this a couple of times, but nothing to the extreme. But I've always assumed again that there was security safety measures in, in place. And this is according to I didn't listen to the whole TED talk, but I'm what I'm hearing is that that's not always the case. Um, so Again, the better vendors you usually tend to invest a little bit of time, especially if they're notified of it. That's what mm -hmm. security researchers do: is we turn around and we tell the vendor, "Hey, you have this flaw here, fix it." Um, the good vendors that want to stay in business and want to keep going, they're more than willing to fix it because it's in their best interest. But again, these like if you get a ch uh, clone mm -hmm. uh, device or get the cheapest one that you can find in the bookstore. Uh, it's probably they're not concerned about being around forever because they've made their money and they'll move on to the next sale. So those are a lot tougher to mm -hmm. trust. <laughs> and one of the difficulties I think will be for whether or not folks know that the device that they have can be updated. So yeah. if it requires a physical update of some kind, you're most likely not to going to know about that. Um, I don't even recall if many of them even come with like a warranty card or a registration card or anything for the manufacturer to tell you about something. Mm -hmm. So you would really be amiss about that. And some manufacturers might decide, okay, well, we're going to come up with a new model within the X, you know, short term future. So that one we will put the extra like measures into, but the generation one or whatever you have, the earlier, you know, item doesn't necessarily have that. Um, and so, yeah. You know, and, and you wouldn't necessarily know that either because mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know if I would ever really expect to see on a device, you know, enhanced security or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, although I think it would be smart on their part because it probably would sell, um, yeah. you know. If there was if there was something, a product that that indicated like. I don't want to say we're, we've got the best security or whatever, you know, something along the lines like we're, we, you know, we're safe, secure, you know, sexual, sensual, whatever, like kind of that thing. I would be like, okay, that might be something I would be considered now um, because I wouldn't, I will admit, I wouldn't have thought about it until we've had this conversation. Right. And there's a whole other aspect to it of even if you got hacked, for example, and, and let's say you, you had a one minute of hell with a electrified chastity cage on and it stopped after that. Are you going to tell anyone? Mm. That is a interesting thought process. I mean, you're, you're I, not going to go to the police. <laughs> you're, you're not going to report it to who? You, I mean, yeah. How would you know? You wouldn't know who did it. You wouldn't know. I mean, unless you somehow are, I mean, again, unless you're also as tech savvy as, say, the person who may have done the things to you. But 
and could have found a way to get into it and and you know figured out okay well if this happened at this time like so who, who else had access to it at you know that time well right. with the chastity cage as the per, as the example like usually like say it's your sir are you well okay well we're the only ones that supposedly have access to it so who else access this if there's an account if there's a you know you know record of some kind is there a way and who has access to that again these are these are you know very interesting thought processes like like who could you who could you for lack of a better phrase um, blame who could you who could you who would you who would you like call on to it cuz like you said i don't know if i would necessarily go to the police for something like this um hey someone fucked with my chastity cage and i'll just see myself out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, and likewise, if it's cloud-based, you're not going to have any information on that. That's all going to be at the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And do they have a process for tracking that down? Probably not. Yeah. They're going to tell you to change your password and move on. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, it brings up a good point about um, comfort. Like when when you're discussing things, like who can you discuss, have these kind of conversations with about sex and the safety like or the not safe like whatever that may be um you know i personally wouldn't imagine going to my local police department to like try to file something of that sort <laughs> me knowing me i i my ass i'd get a hold of the manufacturer i'd be like calling their damn customer service number so i'm gonna be like something happened mm -hmm. y'all need y'all need to like make a record or notation track it something yeah exactly and I mean, look at the, the you, you've heard of the stories of like people uh, uh, signing into other people's Alexa, or sorry, didn't mean to say it out loud, <laughs> their, their, uh, their devices um, and, and being able devices. to listen in or, thank you. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, uh, people being able to, to sneak in and be able to listen and hear stuff, uh, imagine they're doing that with your device. Mm. Now. I will say that the TED Talk in particular, uh, they talked about something I'd never heard of, which is an endoscope uh, combined with an uh, insertable toy. And yeah, that, that's a video feed that I, I can't imagine, uh, but uh, it, those toys exist. And just imagine the invasion of privacy if that got hacked. Literally. I mean, yeah. I mean, if it's being used. Yes, if it's being used, but if it's not being used, and I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't. To be blunt, I don't know why someone would want to like look what's going up on up in my ass, but <laughs> why someone needs else needs to see that. I mean, how much alone. information would you be able to get? <laughs> you might want to go to. To a, I mean, true, fair. Yeah, like you might be, <laughs> you might want to get that looked into. Um, <laughs> but uh, when it's but not being used, with the Facebook, and you'll start getting ads for doctors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't that kind of the whole point of the camera, though, to be able to look inside? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. that. I get that, and I don't, I don't see a reason for it. But I guess maybe if that's what you're in. I mean, it'd be kind of, it would be interesting. I mean, it's not a way for me to get my jollies off, but it'd be like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I, mm, never mind. As I mean, Gary, you, that would be you, a novelty I, thing I, for me. So, like, <laughs> it'd be kind of like one of those one and done things. <laughs> like, but it, 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 but that the sort of thing is basically kind of like the same thing as just having a webcam. Because when you're not yeah. using it. When you're not using it, you have it like on your desk or something, and somebody can hack into the camera. Camera, Hi, basically world. the same thing as a webcam. And that, right. One of the nice things with, with sex toys, though, is, is that odds are you're probably not leaving them powered on mm -hmm. when you're not using them. Fair. So the only window for them to really be hacked is when they're being used, which is kind of worse. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but in the case of, of that uh, camera, uh, it actually had a huge flaw in that uh, it had a default username and password, so anybody within Wi-Fi range could just log in and be able to access it. Nothing like a good old admin one, two, three. Pretty much, yeah. 
I mean, it's one of those things where I hope in the instructions when you receive the device, it says, not that anybody's actually going to read it, says, here's how to change the password. But here's how to get in so you can change the password and username. That was like, my first it, thought, Jeff. You were like, well, hopefully they give you instructions. And I was like, instructions? Are you kidding me? Americans read a little like pamphlet or, you know, literature and text that comes with something? Nah, we don't do that here. And, and to be honest, on that device that they had shown, you couldn't change it. You couldn't change the Wi-Fi uh, ID or the username and password. <laughs> Which um, is but that normally would be like the first revision is to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> right. That right. makes the most sense. It's like you should be able to, you know, change it because yeah. I know I would. I mean, they, they did that in routers for the longest time, didn't they? Part of it was here's how to change your Wi-Fi network name and the, the admin password, etc. Honey. Well, but like some of these toys were using a uh, um, uh, drone uh, BIOS and, and firmware information. Because it's driving a motor. It's the same thing that you would use in a drone. If you're changing the speed of a motor and cranking it up or slowing it down. You might have a camera attached. You might have buzzers. You might have speakers. Uh, a couple of controls. What? So they just grab something off the shelf. Never mind. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> just, just having all these things involved. And I'm like, what is people? And, like, and then I go, no, never mind. Again, like, this is why buying cheap stuff isn't necessarily to your benefit. Yeah. Or, or buying a version one of anything. Yeah. Mm. But that, I that think that would be the first thing I would say. I think the difficulty is, is that, you know, curiosity gets people. Like we were just talking about like the endoscopic camera. So basically it's a flexible cable with a little camera at the end. If you've ever seen them, you know, with medical procedures, they like use that inside the body. And if mm -hmm. you have a human curiosity as to what's going on, like you're not sure if like you have an infection in your throat and you like want to be able to see better or something, mm -hmm. you might drop 20 bucks through Amazon or another service, not sponsored, and, you know, get this thing that comes to your home and you just plug it into your phone and you're kind of like check that action out like i could see my tonsils i could see where my adenoids used to be like apparently i need to clean the back of my uvula like i mean you <laughs> oh, know <yeah. laughs> like you know i could understand like how people would just you know without thinking just like mm -hmm. get stuff and not realize like oh you know, and, and and that device isn't necessarily quite what we're talking about, but that's what I mean is the just the human nature of curiosity of things and be like, oh, yeah, okay. like you know, yeah. Again, the a, the endoscopic camera in a uh, butt plug or dildo would be a curiosity for me, and probably be one of those one and done things that I never actually use that feature ever again. Might well, it also the other features, but still, it also explains to me how those videos get made of uh -huh. people who are using flashlights. And you get to see it from the interior because what the first time I saw one of those, I was like, "How in the <laughs> cameras was... are smaller and smaller?" I know, but I was just like, Ugh. "I'm not really sure." Like, but it is like, but that's you know, I'm more scientifically minded, so I was just totally like, "What?" Like, you know, and then um, very much caught up in the whole like interesting because it got me thinking. I was like, I "Wonder what it looks like from the inside of the human body." But anyways. <laughs> So yeah, anyways, yeah, yeah. I have the um, I just I I and that's I think also part of this is the the we've been talking about this and it 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 all it is all very sex based and sexual and what have you and we don't I don't think we don't think about this like because again you're you're thinking about your pleasure you're thinking about your 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 10, 15 minutes of like bliss. So you may not think on how this little device that you bought to stick up your butt and give you like those pulses and make you feel good. Um, you know, you, you may not be thinking about how well that is because or how like secure that is. Because a perfect example of this, and we, we've talked about this site for a long time, is Chatterbait. Mm -hmm. Like if you've seen if you've like I've I mean I was watching Guys Lady the other night. Um and I was kinda like it it I've been trying to figure out how it all works. Cause it is uh, like the Love Sense, I think it's Love Sense, again not sponsored, <laughs> um, where it's connected 
again, it's in the person, but obviously the app is connected to Chatterbait, and as someone tips them, they get like the pulses and and whatever in your different yeah. types of buzzes depending on yeah, on the yeah exactly. Notification. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Right, because the the theory of what Damon's describing is like depending on how many tokens, how much you tip a person, will determine the response of the device. Mm -hmm. So it could be length or intensity of the you know Both. vibration, or depending because there are um, like you know uh, dildo slash fuck machines that are now like responsive as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they you know have more thrust depth speed power however you want yeah. to define it um that are that are like that as well and so yeah because they i think the very first like generation was more just sound i think responsive like i don't think they really had levels or whatever so it was more like the, it picked up the audio of the notification about like the the token or mm -hmm. tip or whatever it was um but they got pretty i think they got pretty sophisticated quickly. yeah i've been it was funny because I was one of the people I was watching. Um, it was connected, and I was noticing there was one person in the chat that like was doing like a token at a time, mm -hmm. and would do it like five, six times in a row. Now, again, that's a token. It was not like super like extreme, you know, orgasmic vibrations. It was kind of like a boop, 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 boop. But again, if someone has the coin you know i'm sure this could be potentially hacked or whatever uh they could potentially be like i'm gonna give you 500 coins and i'm gonna do it every minute or every second and i mean i just that, that's like those are the things that i think about like what if someone's being we've talked about it before what if someone's being a really twisted fucker and is like i'm going to log into this you know site and i see someone with them on and again users all over the place can access it as long as you have a you know name and password and i'm just going to go in here and i'm going to just keep going at this rate for as long as you i can and and until that person on the other end who's getting the buzzing um turns it off they they're probably still connected to it. I've seen the ones where the guys already came and they're still getting tokens sent to them. And they mostly they're okay with it. But I'm always curious, like, like, dude, I've I just I've, I'm done. Like, can you please stop? <laughs> like, I appreciate the love, but like if it's still like going at it, like I don't want to feel that anymore. But <laughs> I mean, maybe you, I mean, maybe you don't. I mean, again, I don't know you. I don't know them. <laughs> but like, sometimes when you're when you're done, you're done. Like, sometimes I just want to go to sleep. But, uh, <laughs> but like, but again, and that's when you turn it off. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, like if you again, we we kind of you know we've been mentioning these things like. Um, though, like electrical toys in me, I'm I'm not a fan of. I'll just say that I've already. I think I've mentioned that several times on the show. Um, it is not my bag. Um, so like the tins units and things like that. Mm -mm, no, not gonna happen ever. Not for me. Mm -mm, you can you can keep that right there. Um, <laughs> um, I will I will use that when I need to, but not. That's not fun for me. That is that is. No. Anyway, so what I'm learning well, here is that wired and 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 yield analog toys are probably the best. They're the most. Secure. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. They're... And part of it is is people when they bring stuff home, they assume it's within the confines of their home, and so they don't worry about the security because nobody's going to break in. Mm -hmm. But it, it's the problem is is that our devices are reaching out. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, now, an easy way to view like the the uh, uh, the, the vibration effects and uh, how you can look at it from a, a danger point of view is imagine it wasn't giving you an electrical shock or a pulse or whatever. Uh, imagine it was doing a hit of poppers every time yeah. somebody tipped you. Mm. 
uh, you'd want to have a limit somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you'd consider that up front. Yeah. But we don't do that with toys. And that's where we need to change our viewpoint of there is risk there as well. Right. Yeah. Like, well, I yeah. mean, like, you know, Damon's talking about with the chatterbait thing. I've seen people who um, some of the devices, like, you can give other people control. So you can send them a link with like a password and then they have control over the device and you, and now you pretty much can like limit the amount of time that they have control over the device or you can, you know, take back the control as like the master user. But you know, that's still risk, you know, that you're putting that information out there that someone else, you know, could mm -hmm. like Damon was saying, you know, if they're, if they're really, you know, um, thinking more evilly, they're just going to be like, well, I'm just going to, you know, crank it all the way to, to the top and just let it go. Right. Right. And it, it just, it, I've seen people post that like on Twitter, like asking people and I'm kind of like, <laughs> um, no, like, I don't know who you are. I mean, I mean, I don't think I do, but like, I don't know who you are. And while the, Again, the the idea intrigues me. I will admit, as someone who thinks that's kind of could be kind of fun, to just be controlling someone from afar. Um, there's a part of me that thinks like someone could really do some damage depending on what the device, like depending on what the device is, where it is, what it's doing, um, and what all you can do with it. So uh, I'll throw out there, like, except for the chastity cage, because that one's kind of a, a, a thing. Um, most of the devices could be removed if they start acting up. Fair. Um, there is actually a, a one device that I found recently, which is one of the uh, flowers, as they call them. It's the uh, plugs that expand outward once they're inserted. Oh. And there's a digital one of that in the works, which... That terrifies me because you can't get that out. <laughs> mm, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay, we are, we are no, we are not having that. No, that... <laughs> <laughs> but you that might be your thing. I mean, I right. It's not yours, but right. maybe somebody's right. Like I've seen the inflatable ones that kind of get bigger and you, that you have, like you can inflate and, and, and that's one thing, but I'm sure even with that, like as much as you, it might be a little difficult, you could probably still just pop that one out. Um, but like this, sound effect. you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> but like something that does like that and then it's kind of, like, Oh, Oh dear. David's just troubled by the concept of a mechanical lotus up your butt, you know, <laughs> right? And, and and like how that works. Can can I point out the fact that we aren't upset about that is is probably even more telling. I mean, I just it I it, I am okay. I, I'm just okay. one of those who so, oh, I'm open to hear about other people's kinks and right, right. and they, they don't really phase me, but then right. You know, I, I think at one point in time we had a prude cub on our uh, on our. Oh yeah, that was way back in first generation. He comes out loud. Who would ah. be like just this entire talk would be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and everything. <laughs> so Damon's much more toned down. I'm feeling the vibes of a little bit of a prude cub inside of, <laughs> inside of Damon. Right I am just just so a little kidding. bit. So I will put it like this: I am not going to yuck anybody's job. You do what you want to do, have fun, what have you. Just the thought process is in, in my head about, again, there's a, there's a, okay, I'll put it like this. Everyone knows my job. I worked in risk management for years and I still kind of do. Um, well, now I'm technically in human resources, but like my job was risk management. So my <laughs> job, parts of my job were listening and assessing dangers and hoping to find, like, not really finding solutions, but, like, seeing how these things happen and what can be done to potentially prevent it. 
Um, so ideas of certain things, I have to like ex- blow up my mind essentially to be like, okay, someone really did think of doing that. Okay, first off. And that means that there's enough interest for it to happen, secondly. And then third, we're now making said thing. And okay, have we tested? Do we do we do we know that it'll work? What happens like in these situations where like what happens if it gets stuck? Like, are we are we talking about are we talking about that or is companies thinking about these things? Um, you know. Human error is one thing. Mechanical error is a whole different basket. And it happens probably a lot more often than we want to think about. So, um, again, like I said, imagine, if you will, we've been doing these kind of things where something happens. Again, yes, we have people that could potentially, like, hack into these things and control them. But I'm just talking about simple mechanical error. That is what I am thinking about. Like a flower that opens up in your butt and (laughs) you cannot get it out until it closes. That is... Give me a reason to pause. <laughs> what I think is missing is the ability to post on Craigslist these urban legends that are coming about people who got these things stuck inside them and the ER reports that come out of it afterwards. <laughs> Just saying. Um, uh. No, I, I think your point is well taken, Damon. You know, like I don't think they have anybody in a risk management type of uh, position within their company, but I would hope that their their due diligence is you know going through and testing and um, yeah addressing. I mean, I would think probably uh, for for the flower, if they have it, they should have some sort of mechanism because I'm assuming that there's something poking out. Uh, of this device so on there there should be some sort of like emergency unlock or something because in order for it to push things out it has to have force in some sort of way to kind of lock itself in place fair and then so there should be should be i'm not saying there is i'm just saying there should be something on the external part of it that you can like flick a switch, turn in not something to basically let it relax, allowing your ass to basically squeeze it closed so that you can you can pull it out. In theory. In theory. So it's not out yet, but it looks like the device will have that. Oh. Okay, good. <laughs> well, My bigger blue. concern is yeah. that the manufacturer is going to do something stupid, like give you an angle wrench, and that's your backup. Like, to fix the situation. Don't worry. You probably have a whole bunch of those from all the IKEA furniture that you bought. <laughs> but right. Like, but it's going to be so like, convenient right next to, to, to where it. you are. Yeah. You, right you, you know what Where's it'll be. Where's my Allen wrench? Where's my Allen wrench? And can you yeah, give it that flexible to reach yeah. in the direction that you need to? Hopefully, you're doing all this with somebody present. Oh, right. Otherwise, we play with our sex toys with other people. I I mean, you know, sometimes somebody's (laughs) system is the best. I mean, yes, yes. But let's talk about sex. If we're playing with toys, the buddy system is probably the best system. Because it's not like the global pandemic turned us all into hermits who just want to stay home and not interact with the world. And If if you're going to do something alone, make sure it's something that you don't necessarily need a partner for. Or, or that you have a way to get out of. I mean, yeah. that should always be the case. Yeah, always I mean, have an excuse. No matter what you're doing at home. <laughs> so I realize we've been doing uh, some sort of fear mongering, and this is, this episode is not really to scare the <laughs> shit out of people. Um, no pun intended. Um, it's you know, it's more about just making folks aware. But there is a scenario, uh, Tony, that you wrote up that I think I would really like to have a brief discussion about, if it's possible. Um, sure. We're, we're going to go back to IML. Um, so at International Mr. Leather, uh, you may find the following items available, such as cock rings, shock collars, vibrators, butt plugs, tens units, cock rings, uh, and more. Um, By the way, that first word is cock cages. You oh. said cock rings twice. Okay. Just no wonder I was confused. Clarify. 
because I got it. We, to the we know what time. his priorities are. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe subconsciously I was skipping over cages because of the whole electrical discussion. <laughs> I don't know. Fair. But, Fair. but that, be, that being said, you know, so Tony's holding up uh, an example of the what remote control style dog collar. Oh, okay. So like oh. shock collar. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And this one doesn't have the electrodes in it, but that's where they would go. Oh, okay. Oh, but this one also has a phone app that you can attach. <laughs> so if you wanted to control it over a phone, which introduces a whole nother set of vulnerabilities that you wouldn't see with just a remote. Right. So the scenario that Tony uh, presented to us is imagine if suddenly the entire hotel, <laughs> really the entire hotel. Um, <laughs> hey, I mean, wireless has a range of about 300 feet. Well, I was thinking the ballroom. So I was thinking yeah. like the vendor market. This is this is this is like the nightmare slash like comedy <laughs> skit. Uh huh. That it's, is, it's you know, triple X horror film. There you go. <laughs> so and then you know this space is suddenly filled with screams from individuals as every device is cranked to max, and then. The wireless capabilities are disabled, so they cannot be disabled remotely, which of course creates chaos. And it's and you wrote Tony, it's all radio frequencies. Yeah, so Bluetooth and wireless, uh, whether you're talking uh, cellular or Wi-Fi, all of it's going over radio frequencies. Okay. Now the problem is, is a lot of Wi-Fi and almost all Bluetooth is going over 2.4 gigahertz. So. All you have to do is jam 2.4 gigahertz and nobody's phone is going to talk to anything. Oh. So all of those devices, they can't talk. Um, devices like these, the, the, the other toys, they work at uh, other frequencies, usually like 900 megahertz or lower. Um, mm -hmm. So these would be a little more difficult, but not impossible either to jam. So imagine getting it turned on all the way and then somebody decides to jam this. You can't turn it off. So you're going to spend the first couple of minutes trying to desperately turn it down. Or get it out. Now imagine if you have a thousand people doing that. Wow. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and it's not, I'm going to assume it's not hard to jam a frequency. Yeah, you have to have a very quick. So, yeah, well, it gets difficult. So the 2.4 gigahertz uh, for you to jam, technically, like broadcasting out uh, uh, counter signals, is technically illegal mm -hmm. um, because you could be taking out important services, etc. Mm -hmm. However, um, it's real easy to, uh, uh, especially on Wi-Fi, to cause it to break. Um, I, I'm no, nope, not not the box. Um, I actually have a Wi-Fi jammer. Uh, and it, it isn't illegal. It's a legal thing. Uh, it's called a DOF. And basically what it does is it tells your Wi-Fi connection, oops, sorry, you have too many bad transmissions. You need to reconnect. And once you do that, it just ends up in a loop. And that was $10 that I bought it for. And it will block all Wi-Fi signals that I choose. So in theory, if you were at IML, you could turn that on and nobody would be able to use the 2.4 gigahertz wireless which is probably most of what the hotel is offering. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, now, would it be ethical to do that? No. No. <laughs> right. Um, would it reach everybody? No. You, you, you're going to have a limit of, like I said, like a 300 feet limit on your radio broadcast. And especially in a building like that, which is a Faraday cage built in, you're, you're going to be limited in what you can reach. But I mean, just imagine if you took out the wireless for the, or not the wireless, but the internet for the entire hotel. Mm. If coincidentally, accidentally, intentionally, whatever, if it went mm -hmm. out, imagine the difficulty you might have there. Yeah. Uh, people, people with devices that are running that suddenly can't turn them off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, you, go ahead, Dan. And I mean, yes, and some, you know, phones, some have, have potential backups, you know, but like some do, but if they're cloud based. Yeah, it may not be able yeah. to get out. Yeah. Well, that brings up a point I was going to say, um, Tony, like explaining about because we've you've used the word cloud quite a bit. I think it would be important for you people to understand the types of service that exist. 
um, and what that means potentially, like in terms of the technology. So when I'm referring to cloud, it is stuff that uses internet traffic in general, uh, because most of the time, even if you've got your phone and you're attaching to your device, you're going to be using local Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Most of most of the sex toys don't actually like get on your local Wi-Fi by themselves. Um, there are a few that do, and those will be the exceptions. But in general, everything connects to your phone. A good company will have a backup where you can control the device locally without a server out on the internet. A lot of them, however, they don't want to invest in that, so they just put it out on the internet. So if you don't have access to the internet, you can't use the device. Uh, so those would be the ones that I'm referring to as cloud-based. Okay. So it may not actually have a cloud server somewhere where they're storing data, but if it's going through their server and then coming back, that's still uh, going to be internet-based or cloud-based. Okay. Um, local is your preferred, because then you have full control. You can turn off Bluetooth if it's causing you a problem. Uh, the bigger problem there is, is whether or not they fail open or fail closed. And by that, I mean fail open means it turns itself off if it can't talk to anything. And okay. uh, failing open, it means it's turning on and it gets disconnected. Um, that comes from an electrical point of view. If, if your wiring fails on, open or closed, is the circuit open, meaning it's not on, or closed, meaning it's on and live? Um, and then when you get into like the wire, the, the regular RF type remotes, um, those usually fail closed, or fail open rather, because the batteries die in these, they know it. So usually those are a little on the safer side for that. But not always. It's one of those tests it out, see. I mean, turn it on, yank out the battery. That will tell you instantly. Right. Did that answer the question? Sorry. No, it, yeah. So, like, uh, things that use – so the simplest way, I guess, for people to – as a recap is if it uses uh, a app, whether it's on, like, a tablet or a phone, then that's cloud or internet-based. If it has a wireless mechanism, like a remote or a fob or something of that sort, it's probably considered local because it's like just it has to be in the immediate vicinity for that thing to operate. Yeah. Um, in that way. And not all the phone apps. It depends on the phone app. Some of them are, are just dumb apps that sit on your phone and use Bluetooth, in which case, cool. That's a local at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have to create an account on their server, then it's definitely going to be Internet or cloud based. So it's not local at that point. Which most people would probably think, oh, well, I'm creating an account and I have to, you know, put in a username and create, a, you know, a secure password. So th there's probably a, a an understandable presumption because you're taking those steps that it has some security to it because you're creating an account with the login. Mm -hmm. So you would think, okay, well, then, there, you know, there's some level of, of security with that. The downside is, is even on your cell phone now, I mean, how many of us have gotten uh, phishing attempts on our cell phones <laughs> or one bad app install and your phone could be pwned too. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, because of course one of the your things phone I was app is, is auto logged into the site because you had it saved your password or uh, it has a uh, token on it to just automatically log you into the site because you put in your password once oh yeah well or even if you have a local like if you're if your uh controlling app for that toy is a local app meaning it only uses bluetooth and doesn't go out to the internet and your phone gets hacked it's they're going to be able to access it yeah because they're going to have access to your phone yeah now, this device i'm holding up here is uh what I was hoping to, to have demos of, but didn't get it in time. This is uh, what's called a software defined radio. And it's 30 bucks on Amazon. And what okay. it does is it allows you to capture radio traffic. Oh. So okay. kind of so, like if I had a CB radio at home, I can listen to the, to that. Okay. Yeah. And you can see the traffic that's going by. Now, the reason why the demo failed was because um, I, this is a reader only. It doesn't transmit. So there wasn't much to show. But if you had a transmitter one, which if I had about $200 to spend, I could get that. Uh, then, well, I mean, because it's a hacking tool and I'm, right. I'm a geek. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, and uh, the thing is, is now you could do what's called a replay attack. So let's say you turn the device on and turn it up, and I capture that little snippet of radio traffic. Now, in theory, I could replay it, and if your device isn't protecting against it, it'll turn around and do exactly the same thing again. Okay. So you're not technically hacking the device. You're forcing it to do something that it already knows how to do. Yes. Jacking the signal. Yeah. Well, and so you've heard uh, probably in the last six months or so about a bunch of cars getting stolen without any trace. And that's basically what they're doing is they're doing a, a variation on a replay attack against the key fob. Mm. Interesting. It's the same concept. It's just a matter of cheap little devices are now prevalent. Um, the last time I was on the show here, we actually were talking about Elon Musk and his, the uh, uh, youth who generated a, a Twitter account just to follow his plane. Oh, God. This, this is what he used is one of these. Oh, wow. So it's not complicated. It's very easy. <laughs> Interesting. All he was getting was the FAA broadcasts that announced where and when the plane was going and what it was departure information was. And that's all public knowledge. Interesting. <laughs> just, it just, again, like it, the, the things we don't think about. Yeah. Well, and I'll give you a scarier one uh, that, that is mentioned in the TED Talk, but he doesn't really go into depth on it. Um, is location services. Ah. I mean, imagine, uh, so one of the problems they had for a long time was uh, Fitbit and other tracking uh, software to like track your run, et cetera, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would display your run information public. You could make it private if you wanted, but by default, you wanted to show off your run, right? So you wanted to show the route you took, when you took it, what your speed was, et cetera. But recognizing there, you're also telling an attacker, I'm going to be at this location at this time. Here's a hill that I have to climb that is going to wear me out at the top. So I'm going to be really tired and walking really slow. Uh, <laughs> here's where I lose my cell phone signal. Here's where it comes back. All that data is sitting out there in the public. Now imagine that with a sex toy. As we all think are nodding our heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now my co-hosts know why I wanted Tony to come on because <laughs> I like this is the stuff that I had not even considered at all. Right. Um, you know, but the thank goodness for you know Mr. Ken with the TED talk because that's not a typical talk that they do um at TED. They don't really get into human sexuality a whole lot. Um, and especially about like because this is really focusing on activity, like choice mm -hmm. of, of you know doing something in that case. But I think you bring up an interesting point about like the location data aspect that gets revealed. And I think a lot of us take that for granted. Like we just mm -hmm. presume, um, yeah. you know, that, that it, you know, well, that's how it works. I mean, I, and, and, well, I'm just in general, ahead. like I was talking about it. I was thinking about it. Like I was in, like I, I was in Nashville um, for more day weekend and I'm posting all over Facebook that I'm, I'm going to these places and I'm here and I'm having, you know, breakfast or lunch or dinner and whatever. Um, I wasn't home and Tim mm -hmm. was with me. If you knew us well enough, I mean, granted, we've got a security system here in the house and blah, 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 but I'm just thinking more along of like, you could, you, you knew I wasn't home. Right. Well, and that's it's, like, that's one of the key things about people with their, you know, social media type accounts. It surprises me the number of people that are just like, open to the world and i'm like all public post like well right and i'm like do you y'all realize like the whole world can see that and you're kind <laughs> of giving some things away like you know that's why usually when i go away and i'm on vacation or whatever i don't really post a whole lot mm -hmm. until it's done you know or i have it set like if people tag me it doesn't automatically get broadcast i have to approve it before it like you know comes up or whatever and that's all yeah. just intentional because it's like i don't need the world knowing where i am and what i'm doing i'm not ashamed and, or afraid. it's just like it's not relevant in the moment and part of that is a generational thing uh so 
right now is, is the as you get into younger groups, they tend to be more open about publishing where they are, what they're doing, how they're feeling, all of that. And as you get older, that tends to be a little more hidden and not as public. Um, right. But I mean, just another, I can give you another scenario if you'd like that probably most of us could relate to. <laughs> uh -oh. Do it. Go for it. Okay. Imagine you have an ex that you've used sex toys with for a bit. Okay. Okay. And you break up. It, it wasn't the greatest of breakups, but it was a breakup. But they, they know that you have all of these toys. They're, they're aware of it. It's not a big ordeal. But at some point, you, you, they go to the bar, you go to the bar, they get ticked off. And since they're at the bar, they can turn around and see you on Growler whenever you show up within 100 feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. They can see the Wi-Fi point or the Bluetooth that your device makes. They know what the username and password is, so they can just log into it. And they could sit across the bar and, you know, just taunt you. And you wouldn't know what it is. Just another one of those considerations that we don't usually think about. <laughs> right, because, I mean, you know, we've talked before in the podcast about the security aspect, like the safety aspect, actually, more than security, when it comes to the apps and, like, giving your information to other people. Because unfortunately, it's still happening today that people are being tracked or, you know, harmed, um, you know, and, and some people are doing well in informing roommates, friends, you know, family, hey, I'm, you know, going on a date or whatever, I'm going to meet this person, blah, 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 you know, but still, not everyone has the best of intentions. And, you know, that's, that's just a safety risk. And now we add the element of like the device. And, you know, in a way, sometimes the device is constantly broadcasting and, you know, announcing, this is where I am, this is what's going on. And you don't even quite think about it that way. And it could be even more dangerous if you, if you're visiting a country, for example, where the homosexuality is banned and you turn on a sex toy, that is advertising, saying, I'm here, come get me. You may not even think about it. You're thinking for a good night. Right, because you might be like, hey, honey, like, I got to travel for work. I'm going to be away for a week. And, like, let's set up, you know, some, like, we're going to talk on the phone nightly, you know, in, like, two of the nights. Like, we're going to have some fun, and I'm going to give you, like, remote control over X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Or even if you do control on your own, you may not even think about it and just leave the wireless on. True. And yeah, you, you're telling everybody that's listening, at least, that you're there and you have this device. And depending on the device, they may or may not have the ability to see what you're up to with it. Right. Or literally, if it has a camera, they might be able to see what you're up to with it. <laughs> so this kind of brings up an interesting point. Like, what are some things that we should think about? Like, because most likely now everyone's like, you know. Three, three, three fire are, you know, alarm <laughs> concerned, I guess. And, and the thing to look at for all of this is recognize that your risk is only while the device is on. Um, so if you're using the device an hour a day, you're still 23 hours of the day, you're going to be safe. So at a very, very minimum, your odds are already low. <laughs> um, if you follow proper things like making sure you have a username and password that is good, uh, if you have the ability to change them on the devices, that's always a good thing. Do it. Uh, if you don't have the ability to change it, recognize it. I mean, just go in and look and see if you can. If you can't, then you, you know that it's going to be advertising it. So don't do it somewhere where you might get in trouble for it, i.e. work. <laughs> Fair. Um, always have an, an ability to turn it off. So, like, even if we're talking, like, the uh, chastity cages where you don't have a key, physical key, always have the digital key. Um, don't assume that you're going to have internet access to be able to go get it. Keep a copy of it local. Um, or make sure that you can call someone who does have it at the very minimum. Uh, but that's the same true with any chastity cage. You, sh you should always have a backup key. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's I, – I, I have a good friend of mine over on the uh, West Coast makes what he calls codexes which are basically little uh, puzzles that you have to solve. 
And uh, once you open the box, it can't be put back together. And he puts the chastity keys in those. Mm. Because that way, if they're opened, he knows that they've been opened. And yet at the same time, if they need to get in for an emergency, they can. Mm. Makes sense. And it's, a, it, it's a smart idea. So like if you have a passphrase or a passcode to take your uh, chastity cage off, have it on your phone. Doesn't mean you have to use it, but <laughs> take a screenshot or something. Make sure you keep yeah. it local. Um, with wireless devices, uh, the, the ones that are the dumb devices, there's not a lot you can do about those. You're, you're kind of stuck with what you buy. Uh, but usually also they don't tend to do a whole lot that could mm-hmm. be dangerous. I mean, it, it might go to 10 and that's going to be about your limit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just in, the, in, ger- in general, I, w- I would say that most of these situations that have been brought up, these are definite what if beware sort of scenarios, but the likelihood that any of that's going to happen can be slim still. I'm not saying none. Oh, slim to none. Slim. Yeah. Very slim. So it is something to be aware of and make sure that you take the necessary precautions and most of it it's just what you said so just make sure if there's a username and password secured if it's uh say that you're aware it when you get one of these devices don't be the stereotypical man read the instructions <laughs> read read the pamphlet be aware and if it comes with the ability to like share it out to friends don't post it to twitter i mean <laughs> yeah don't post it to twitter I, stuff I, like that if, you, if you're gonna if you want to try to find somebody that's doing it go through every any sort of precautions that you normally do with anybody you have a relationship sexual relationship with yeah make sure you, you talk discuss explain boundaries we have an entire entire series of episodes about relationships sometimes those are even the one-time relationships some of those things can happen mm-hmm. so um so there are things you can do to get your jollies off. It may not be anything of our cup of tea, but yeah. knowing best ways to take the precautions, the likelihood that something like this is going to happen, slim to none. So, yeah, but it's still important. And it's yeah, and anything that that you do, sexually speaking, your your odds of it going completely off the wall wrong is probably unlikely. But it's still a good thing to consider if it does that you don't have to try and figure it out then. Yeah, like I know, I I know we've been and you know if you've been watching like uh, the faces and stuff, yeah, it's freaky. But again, I think it's for me is more of the shock because I don't th- again I don't think I've thought about this in this depth before. By you 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 don't think about it because you're thinking about something else. Oh yeah, I mean, who in the world would have ever considered that you need to do a firmware update on a butt plug? I mean, (laughs) right? Back when (laughs) back when I purchased some butt butt plugs, Internet of Things wasn't really a thing, right? I mean, the biggest concern was if you bought one that was glass, you just didn't want it to break, right? Hey, yeah, and again now, like again, like as we as technology has has shifted and and gotten better, and I know we we didn't mention it too much, but you know as you know we've learned more about our bodies and gotten a lot of more lot more um, intimate with ourselves because of the pandemic in some ways. Um, taking that prevention, that precaution, is is necessary because we're you know you might have been like exploring yourself and be like, I really want to try this and let me get one of these things and figure it all out. Um, I agree with you 100%, Jeff. Read the fucking instructions. Because believe it or not, there might be a fail-safe on the device that if it's getting to a point, you might be able to hit a few buttons and it immediately turns off like or something. You know, you never know. You know, they're, they're, but you wouldn't know unless you read the instructions. Yeah. Don't just use the device. Also examine it. Yeah. And then look that at the did. manual to be like, what's this do? Mm-hmm. And also recognize that we, we, all of us uh, tend to do things like we tend to get auto insurance and we tend to get things to prepare us in the event of something going horribly wrong. So we consider these things in advance. 
we also need to do the same thing with these toys of like, if something goes really wrong, how am I going to turn this off? Right. And I think that's the, the biggest thing that folks need to think about um, and pay attention to is like, what is, what is the, the options? How does this work or, or whatever? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what are, what are my exits, I guess? Yeah. Where are my exits? Where? <laughs> yeah. Get your virtual uh, uh, airline attendant. There you go. Attendant. Yeah. <laughs> Always use two fingers when doing the pointing instead of just one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they use full hands hands for when doing yeah. the pointing. I think they only they do the two fingers thing. I don't know. Okay, um, I've not been in a plane in like five years, so give me. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've been on a plane. Too. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Mm, mm -mm. But I, I don't think they use full. Well, I think the full hands are more of somebody who's like way out there. Although usually they probably have the lights and they're the, the, the they're actually guiding the plane to wherever their gate is or something. I don't know. That's semaphore. No, 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 no. That's, that's the flags. That's the flags, and that's on ship. That's a different thing altogether. And we already discussed that in a whole other whole podcast. Other podcast. Uh, episode mm -hmm. yeah. uh red flags green flags uh with uh with the dr angelini cook there anyways yeah oh excuse me yeah well wow. so did you have any recommendations on devices that people might want uh so like <laughs> um right now i think all of the devices have limitations uh my experience has not been that any of them are perfect yet um, having said that, like the, the cellmate one that we talked about, the chastity cage, uh, from what it sounds like based on what the Ted talk was talking about, um, because I believe that's what they were referring to was that device, uh, because in the talk, they talked about how version one, they went to the manufacturer and got it patched. And then the manufacturer immediately released version two <laughs> that didn't mm. have the patch. Oh, so, wow. Well, and it's just a matter of. They, they were in the process of rolling it out, so they're not going to stop rolling out a product because somebody's working on a patch. That, that, that's not a business uh, uh, argument that they're going to go with. Mm. So they, they'll release an update, and I probably already have at this point because it's been a couple of months. Um, I don't have one of those devices, so I can't verify, but I'm sure out there we can uh, <laughs> verify that. But... Uh, Vendors that do patches, they need to be given credit for the fact that they are actually patching these things and not ignoring it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have a list of those vendors. However, I know from past experience in dealing with LoveSense and uh, uh, Pavlock, that's another device that's not really sexual in nature, but it could be depending on how it's used. Um, both of those have very good support mechanisms uh, based on my experience. So personal recommendation. <laughs> Hmm. So, like the hush plug or the, yeah, was it hush or lush? Hush. Hush, thank you. Yeah. And there's also, they make a, a prostate version as well. Yeah, that, that's called the Edge. Oh, the yeah, one that's thank you. The, the, they also make a sex machine. Sorry, excuse me. I'm on their <laughs> website. <laughs> Yeah, they make a masturbator, a uh, kind of a flashlighty thing. App control, I have no knowledge on it. So. Automatic thrusting and adjustable. Limited time pre-sale. Ooh, this is apparently a new, a new device. What is this? It's called the Love Sense Sex Machine. Oh. Never buy 1.0. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, are you sure but, you want to be but, a beta uh, tester uh, of a sex Tony. toy? It has double-sided thrusting. <laughs> Design allows two people to use the machine at once. Two silicon dildos and two vacuum lock adapters included. Cap capable with all vacuum lock dildos accessories. And I just have this uh, vision of like the vacuum turning on and two people trying to get out of it. Because <laughs> it won't turn off. Well, you know. <laughs> well, I think the vacuum lock uh, is for locking it to the machine. 
Oh, okay. I, I, right. I, you know, like, uh, or I think the original t intent was like if you wanted to put it on a wall I or just, something. It's to... so funny because I'm just I'm putting it like this. The literally it says "Love Sense Sex Machine." It won't quit until you do. <laughs> Well, uh, and there you it's go. It's on robust motor, offering variable speed up to 300 strokes per minute. So there's your recommendation. Don't buy a sex toy that has a battery that can go 30 hours. Mama. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. It can go no. up to a adjustable stroke length up to uh, uh, 11.4 centimeters. I don't they only did that so they could say it goes to 11. <laughs> Which is roughly the equivalent of four and a half inches. Okay, that's, a, that's not bad. No. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, busy, I'm busy watching the video of them uh, selling the, their device called the Gush. Which is the uh, vibrating masturbator sleeve? Um, the problem I have though with it, though, that bothers me, is it like so? They're se they're letting you know that it's USB rechargeable, but it has a magnetic aspect to it, so that the charging cord automatically magnetically connects. Oh, yeah. with oh. the thing or whatever. And I there was a part of me that was like. Now, you know, some fool is going to put that thing on their penis and then they're going to try to charge it while they're wearing it. <laughs> no. And they're going to get a pubic hair stuck and they're going to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be bothered and upset by it. I'm just saying. They'll be OK, because usually those are USB charger levels. So you're talking five volts. I wasn't thinking about the shocking thing. I was just thinking about the fact that, like, the, because it's a magnetic oh, thing, they show it and it like snaps together. Yeah. And I'm like, right, you know, so you get a curly stuck in that. Yeah, I don't imagine that would be pleasant, but I'm just saying. See, this is where it comes from different, where we look at it differently. I look at it from like you getting electrocuted, <laughs> and you're looking at it from getting pinched and pulled. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a good idea to charge it while you're uh, using it. I mean, it will fit regardless of where you fall on the size chart. And if you're looking at that, there's also uh, devices like the Auto Glow, for example. They they make different versions of those that are similar products. One is dumb and doesn't really do anything other than turn on and off. Uh, the other one, they have a an AI version which can sync to your phone and download tracks. But I don't believe it's cloud based either. I'd have to do more research. But like those are examples of non uh, cloudish, where you would have local control over it. Mm -hmm. I just want a device where, yeah, like, I can sync it to my iTunes account or, or my, <laughs> and then like play a song and have have like, you know how how you have the screensavers that would respond to the to like mm -hmm. music, the visualizations, kind of the same thing, but in a butt plug or something. Oh, well, L Lush is the company you want to look at because most of their stuff is sound responsive. Yeah. And the app even allows you to, like, play from your playlist. And actually, if you want to get uh, technical, a lot of the TENS units also are the same way. Mm -hmm. They usually have audio input. Even some of the high-end ones. Yeah. Sync with your music. <laughs> And this is, this is when you turn on the death metal, right? <laughs> Could be. Could very well be. Yeah. Hmm. That being said, uh, Tony, is there anything else as we're getting ready to wrap up we should talk about or go over for folks? I, I don't think so offhand. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of... Uh... The various devices, stuff like the, uh, just to, to give people a heads up on the uh, dog collar, don't use them if you can avoid it. Um, just, it's, it's not very safe in general to use, but 
I know people do use them, which is why I brought them up. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Um, I think overall, just in general, as we've kind of mentioned before, like with some of these toys and things that were mentioned, um, yes, you can play with yourself, but you know, if you can have a buddy or have a buddy system in place, um, just in case, um, cause at, I mean, a lot of these things, I don't think we're, 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 we've been joking and kind of like, you know, like the tins thing and the electrocuting and all that stuff. It, it has the potential to be dangerous, but it takes a while for certain things to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, so just, you know, so just be, you know, you can potentially get yourself out of it without too much issue. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you absolutely can't, please find a, you know, if you can find someone to help you. Always have an out. You, yeah, always, always have an out. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't, I'd also make a recommendation for anybody using these toys, uh, just from a, not from a security point of view, but just before you go to use them, always check them out. Um, almost all of these have lithium batteries in them and they're using the same cheap lithium batteries that are exploding everywhere. So if your toy is bulging in some weird way, uh, throw it out. Don't, mm. don't keep using it. <laughs> Fair. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good point. Very good point. Like check it before I'd be more it. worried about that exploding than it getting hacked. Yeah. Especially if it's inside you. Yes. That part. And again, don't charge it while you're using it. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you're fully charged before you use it and then use it. Yeah. I okay. know it'll suck. You may have to wait a, you know, a few hours, but like, let it charge. It's a perfect time for yeah. foreplay. In any case, I think that's <laughs> exactly. I think that's the end. Uh, play ways to contact us. Uh, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Let us know your favorite uh, electric toy. You can also send us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, leave us a voicemail, six or otherwise at three six one. Yeah, we'll talk. That's three six one two six five eight two five five. We accept moans of your pleasure while you your love senses uh, working your insides or your outsides. We could have also follow us on Facebook, the Twitter, and YouTube. That comes online in the appropriate place in the URL, or chat us up at on Telegram at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Do you want to know when we're planning on recording these? So you can find that all on our Google Calendar at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements such as um, a comes out loud t-shirt or consent is my foreplay shirt, shirt and hats and a whole bunch of things. Uh, you can find that at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of the designs we have up there are uh, designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at TeePublic at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And if you just want to send us a little donation our way to help us improve the show, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, basically any place you can subscribe to a podcast, uh, Amazon, Audible, Spotify. Uh, find me anywhere on the internet as box set box puppy box cub box something or other or windgem w-y-n-d-g-e-m on twitch where i stream bears and dragons where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play dungeons and dragons and i was able to totally disturb my uh, uh players last week so very proud nice demon um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCup79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Um, most bear-related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. Mr. Tony, if folks would uh, like to follow up with you uh, or um, get in touch with you online, is there any way that they could do that? Uh, I'm on Twitter as Cubses. Uh, that's probably the easiest one, but also on Facebook listed under Cubses. But mm -hmm. and that's... That... I was just gonna spell it. It's C U B Z I Z, correct? Yes. Thank you. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. all right. And with that, take it out, everybody. Bye, everybody. Ciao for now.